All right, welcome everyone. This is Jeff here with FX MindShift, and today we're going to be doing an introduction to the market maker cycle. So um, let's get started here. The uh, first question that is on everyone's mind is what is the market maker cycle, right? What exactly is it? Um, the first thing that you guys have to realize, okay, is that the Forex market is rigged. Um, the sooner you guys understand that, the, the, the better off you'll be because then you'll understand how to kind of, um, you know, trade the way that you should be trading and uh, not against the big players. So there's two, you know, main groups of uh, traders in the market. There's the, the retail traders, which is, you know, 90% 90, 90 of the, the, the people, which are people like us. And then there are the market makers. Uh, so these guys are, you know, the dealers, the brokers, the, the hedge funds, the big banks. Um, these are the guys that you're trading with and these are the guys that are trying to take your money. So um, this market maker cycle is, is basically a a cycle that can be found on all time frames um, with a specific pattern that that repeats um, that you can that you can exploit right if if you were able to trade in line uh, with the market makers with the big banks um, you would be you know a lot better off because then you know you wouldn't find yourself um, you know going head on against these uh, these big players that that actually control and move the markets okay so uh, my goal for you guys today is for you to be able to identify the pattern trade in line with the market maker and then also learn to spot the different variations of the pattern because you know if I just show you a pattern and say this is what you need to look for obviously that would be a little bit too easy right you just look at the pattern and and uh, <laughs> you know you could exploit it but the market makers uh, are tricky okay they, they they tend to vary things up and, and they change they tend to, to like to trick us so um, you know that's what I'm gonna go over today I'm gonna show you guys basically how they do what they do okay um, so let's talk a little bit about the market maker objectives. Okay, what are they really uh, trying to accomplish? So really, um, you know, what they're what they're trying to do is they're the first thing is to induce traders to take positions. Okay, because if you have money sitting in a trading account, it really does no good to them until you trade the money. Right. So you need to take a position, and they're going to try their best to to get you to do that. Okay. Uh, once you are in the position, okay. Once you've taken a trade. Um, you might be holding it for a bit and then what they'll do is they'll kind of create a panic and a fear, right? They'll, tr they'll try to get a um, trader to think irrationally and do things that they wouldn't normally do with their money. So um, they can do this, you know, with, with new spikes. They can do this, uh, you know, with, with big shift candles, um, you know, and you, you can see those on the charts sometimes, you know, just a, a big candle out of nowhere and um, you don't know what's going on. And, and, and then you either, you know, cut your trade in a loss and a big loss or you know, maybe add a position and over leverage and over margin. And, uh, and that's what they do, right? They, they, they'll hit your stop losses. They'll clear those orders. They'll force you into margin trouble and they pocket your money. Okay. So those are really what, um, the market makers are trying to do with your money. Uh, these are the objectives. Okay. So induce traders to take positions, create a panic and a fear to get traders to think irrationally. And then they'll hit the stop losses, clear the orders. If you don't have stop losses there, they'll force you into margin trouble. And then uh, eventually if you're over leveraged, you're going to blow your accounts right and they pocket your money okay so um, let's take a look at what happens in a typical day in Forex okay so we have three sessions um, you know three the three big sessions are the Asian session um, the London session and then uh, the New York session right and then it just repeats so um, the Asian session usually is the accumulation phase okay this is where the initial high and the low of the day are set and that's the initial high right not the not the final high and low but um, during this phase, they, they kind of uh, trade uh, within you know each other and, and just kind of create this this range, um, this high low range for the day. Okay, then what's going to happen after that is you're going to get some kind of stop hunt, okay, or a false move out of the Asian range, okay, which is against the intended real move. This happens usually in London session. So Asian session ends, London session starts, and then there's this false move out of the Asian range against the real intended move. Uh, following that, there's the trend move, which is the real move, and that usually goes for about six to eight hours, slow and steady, right? And then um, the, the London session will end, and then following that will be the New York session, um, which usually you'll get a reversal off the higher or the low back into consolidation to end the day, okay? And then, and then the whole thing repeats again, all right? So um, what are the trading hours that these happen in? Um, we're going to talk about um, the hours in Eastern time zone. So the, all these are in Eastern time, all right? So starting off, um, 
the market closes at 5 p.m. Okay, and that's when the high and the low reset, right? So the previous day's high and low uh, are reset here. Um, there's a end of day gap time between 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. This is like a dead gap time. There's really no activity going on here. Um, just waiting for the Asian session to start and uh, trading desk to start, right? So uh, Asian session starts at 8.30 p.m. to 3 a.m. And this is what we talked about um, just before uh, about the accumulation phase, okay? So banks and, and, and um, you know, other market makers will trade uh, amongst themselves. It's called circular trading. And they'll kind of just collect contracts and pick up orders and just create this little range uh, in the initial high and low of the day, right? Uh, then the London session starts at 3.30 a.m. to about 9 a.m., okay? And then that's where you're going to see your stop hunt move, the false move, and then the, the trend move, right, for the real, the real move of the day, all right? And then as London session comes to a close, New York session starts, okay, at 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. to end the day, and that's where you're going to get your reversal and the, uh, the end of day consolidation. Now, you're also going to notice that there are uh, small gaps, okay, in between the sessions. So between Asian session and London session, there's a half hour gap, 3 to 3.30. And London session 9 to uh, New York session 9.30, there's a half hour gap. So what happens between those gap times is that the, um, you know, the, the market makers in the Asian session are ending their day and they have to discuss, you know, what their goals and their targets are for the day. Um, and pass those along to the guy that's that's taking over in the London session, right? So session changeovers, okay, information is being passed between the market makers um, to basically uh, relay what the goals and the targets are for the day. So, you know, uh, the London session guy is getting off at 9 a.m. and he may pass on to the New York session guy saying like, okay, so to end the day, you know, we need to collect another $500 or $500 million in, in contracts in you know, the euro pair or the, or the, you know, pound pairs. And, um, that information will be re relayed to the New York session guy and then he'll have his, his targets for the day. So that's where those gaps come in, just in case you were wondering. All right. And, um, if you guys are taking trades and you're, um, you know, doing your, your chart analysis and, and things like that, you really want to be looking to take the trades, um, during London session open and, uh, New York session open. Those are really the only two times uh, you should be looking for opportunities and setups because those are when, you know, the markets are going to, are going to move and that's when the setups happen. Okay. So take, um, you know, particular, um, special attention to those times and, and trade only those times. That's my recommendation. So let's take a look at how this looks on an actual chart. Okay. So this is the, um, pound yen, GBP, JPY. All right. And this was actually last week, last Thursday. All right. So you can see here, um, the blue box on the screen represents the Asian phase or the uh, Asian range, excuse me, and the red box represents the New York uh, session. So, and then right in between is the London session. So you can see in the blue box area, that's the accumulation phase um, in, the, in the Asian session. And they're just kind of, uh, you know, setting the high and the low, uh, trading in a small range amongst themselves. And it creates this box, right? And once the Asian session ends, um, you're going to get the, uh, the false move, like I said, the stop hunt, okay? What they do is they break out of the Asian box, okay? They move uh, pretty quickly, as you can see, down to the low there, <clears throat> and, um, and, that's the, and that's a stop hunt, right? That's the false move against the real intended move, which you can see happens right afterwards, okay? And then they shoot right up, you know, that's a, it's a pretty big candle, right? Um, into the New York session, okay, which brings the reversal, Okay, and then and then we're back into consolidation, All right? So that's a typical you know typical forex uh, day, and you can see the the three different sessions there, um, pretty clearly. Okay, so um, the phases of the market maker cycle. Um, basically, what what I had explained earlier with the objectives, right? Well, how do they do it through the cycle? Okay, because the cycle is really um, how they accomplish their objectives. So they they induce, they trap, and they shift. Okay, let me go over those uh, quickly. So the three levels of rise or drop is the inducement phase. Okay, so you'll see on a chart <clears throat> that, um, you know, generally they like to um, uh, rise uh, three levels before they make the, the shift or, or drop three levels. Okay, and you'll see that the number three um, plays a very big um, a role in the charts. Okay, um, lots of things come in threes. Psychologically, we just kind of, um, you know, gravitate to the number three. And the market maker uses that against us, 
okay, because um, you'll see that on the third level um, is where they, they trap us, okay? So once they induce you into the trade after the three levels of rise or the drop, getting you to think that the, the market is going to continue in that direction, um, you're going to see the trap happen, which is an M or W formation, and usually at the high or the low of the day, okay? And um, they trap you at that, at, that, at that level, and then they'll take it away from you, okay? Then they'll shift. They'll reverse back to the range and then go into consolidation and leave you, you know, stuck in that trade, okay? So induce trap shift, all right? So let's go back to our chart again. I'm going to show you exactly what that looks like um, <clears throat> on this chart. So back to the GB, GBP, JPY, um, you can see in the Asian range, okay, the blue box, we have three pushes down. All right, to induce the traders to go short. That's our false move out of the Asian session, right? If you see that on a chart, if you're if you're you know unknowing trader, um, you know a, a retail trader learning all the technicals, uh, all the books and things like that, when they tell you that uh, you know a, a trade is breaking out like that, you're you're taught to go short, right? Continue the trend, and uh, you know take that short. Um, what happens is after the third push. Um, you can see that they, you know, issue a nice set of railroad tracks there, which is that uh, long red candle followed by the long green candle. Okay, so they they um, went down to the low. They trapped the traders that were going short. Okay, then they went. Um, they basically pulled back immediately. Okay, so all the traders that were taking that short down there um, are now trapped and stuck in the drawdown. Okay, then what they do is they'll hit it again, right? They'll come back down to the low, but they won't actually come back to the low and take it out. Because if that happens, what they do is they'll release the people that had their stop losses at break even down there, right? So they don't they don't want to release that volume. They don't want to let those traders go that had their shorts down there to get out at break even, right? Or get out with a with a with a small loss there. They want them to to keep them in that drawdown. So what they'll do is you see those three, you know, kind of doji candles there. They just kind of hang around at that level, and um, that accomplishes two things. Number one, it keeps those people there, right, in those trades, thinking that this trade will, will continue to go down and get them out, and it also induces more people to go short because they're they're holding that level and they're hanging around down at the bottom there, and making people think that this is going to go down, right? But then you can see um, right afterwards is a big, nice big green shift candle out of the zone, okay. Trapping the sellers down there, making the making the W as you can see, and then coming right back out, and uh, and they and they got the hell out of there, right? So it's a it's a really um, um, you know bad situation that you're in if you took that short. Uh, if you didn't have stop losses there that that got taken out, then then you are in a big drawdown right now. Um, and if your account is you know over leveraged, you probably blew your account, right? So then they go back up into the. Um, New York session, we have our end of day reversal. So you can see the uh, reversal there and then back into consolidation, right? So actually on the flip side, when you're going into the New York session, um, you know, this is also uh, inducing traders to go long, right? So you can see those those, those big candles going up, um, you know, getting people to think that this is gonna go keep going up and going long, um, but then what they do is they reverse back and then they go into consolidation and trap those traders long as well. So it's twofold, this move, right? They trap the traders short and they trap the traders long going up. So at the high and the low of the day. So you really got to pay attention to the highs and the lows of the day. Okay. And then look for the, the, the traps and the formations and the candlestick patterns at those times. All right. So um, taking a look at the market maker cycle on a weekly scale. Okay. So if you, if you kind of zoom out and look at this on like an H1 chart, you can kind of see that the market maker cycle looks kind of like this. Okay. So this is really the, the pattern that you are, are looking for. All right, you're going to have some kind of peak uh, formation. Um, then you're going to have uh, the M at the top and then uh, three levels of drop, all right, followed by the peak formation low, which will form a W. And then, um, you know, on the flip side, obviously, it's just going to look the same the other way, right? So the peak formation low with the W, three levels of rise, um, followed by the peak formation M at the top and then down. Okay, now this is not going to look like this, you know, perfectly like this every single time, but there's, you know, there's, there's going to be variations and there's, there's times where it's going to look uh, pretty close to this. Okay, so let's take um, a look at on the, on the real charts again. Okay, this was USDJPY uh, just a couple weeks ago. 
and you can see clear uh, market maker cycles on this chart right here. And uh, so you can see it's um, there's a on the left here there's a peak formation M, uh, three levels of drop, okay, down into the uh, the low of the week, into a W, uh, followed by three levels of rise, and then a peak formation M, and then uh, cons uh, reversal into consolidation, right? So the the cycle is there. Uh, and if you look on the charts and you, and you take a look um, on a few different pairs, you'll see the cycle there. You just have to learn to recognize the pattern. So you can see it pretty clear here on the USDJPY, right? So um, in contrast, this is what the retail trader sees, right? The retail trend is seen by the herd simply as a rising channel that will keep rising, okay? But with the market maker cycle, we know better. The market maker trend starts once the M on the top locks and account starts to run lower, right? So, but if you're if you're a retail trader and you're learning the technicals and uh, you know you're reading the trading books, they teach you to trade these breakouts once they um, pass the resistance or once they bust through the support. You're taught to take the breakouts and continue the trend, right? Trade with the trend. But if you don't understand the market maker cycle and you don't know where you are um, in the cycle, this could work against you, right? So if you're taking a breakout. At, at the top, uh, you know, uh, of the uh, the M and and, and uh, you know it breaks through the resistance and you take that trade, um, you know you're going to be in drawdown. You're either going to blow your account if you don't have your stop losses in place. Um, you know a lot a lot of traders get tricked, um, you know, because they don't understand the cycle. So that's uh, where learning the cycle and knowing the cycle will help you in your trading and save you a lot of money, right? So um, when you're looking for trade setups. Okay, there's there's a couple criteria, right? Once you have identified where you are in the cycle, you can drop down to a lower time frame and find a trade setup or an entry. Okay, so ideally, what you want to watch for um, on the H1 uh, and the M15, those are recommended time frames to watch for. Okay, is you look for your directional bias on your H1, and then you drop down to your M15 for your entry, um, either at the second leg of the M or the W formation. Okay. So that's basically, um, you know, I just want to kind of give you a, a basic setup for you guys to look for. Um, obviously, there's more detailed and more uh, advanced setups to take um, once you once you learn the cycle and, and the, the nuances. But for now, this is what we're we're going to look at. Okay, so this is your benchmark. This is really what you're looking for, right? You're looking for a super clear uh, market maker cycle, and then you're looking for that cycle, that pattern to appear on the M15 as well. Okay, so you can see the Asian box, the blue box there. And then you're going to get, uh, you know, the move out of the box and you're going to get your M or your W. Okay, second leg at the higher low of the day. All right, that's, that's uh, you know, that's the typical setup that you're looking for. Okay, so um, as an example, let's take a look at a live uh, chart example here. Um, you can see this is USD CAD. And we have the H1 chart on the left-hand side uh, with the market maker picture there transposed. You can see that the, the cycle, we had a full cycle completed, okay. Um, and now it's you know reversing and it's it's doing the second cycle on the way up, all right. Now if you kind of like transpose that over to the uh, the M15, look in in correlation to the M15 chart, okay, where that W um, is occurring. Um, on the M15, you have the Asian Asian uh, range, the move outside of the Asian box, the false move out of the box, which forms a W at the low of the day, okay. And then you can see that the the W continues up. And does the three pushes up before it reverses in New York session back down into the range in consolidation. Okay, so if you understand this, the market maker cycle and you understand what to look for in your setups, you can catch these moves um, and, and make some nice pips. This this trade here was, you know, looks like a little bit over maybe 60, 70 pips uh, that you, you, you could have caught on this move uh, just for understanding the cycle and knowing when to enter the trade, right, and looking for, for the signs. Okay, so um, now you got to learn to recognize the variations because, like I said, it's it's it would be too easy if I just showed you this pattern and, and say you know this is what you need to look for and then you just look for that right because obviously the market makers have to switch things up okay um, they can't just make it easy like that and and, and uh, you know let you, uh, you know, exploit them and, and run them over so they know that right they know that they have to change things up so you got to also recognize that they will also change things up. Um, and they'll change things up um, by changing the times. You know, it might not always be out of the Asian box. It might not always be um, at the start of London session or New York session, right? 
they'll change it, they'll shift it. Um, they'll test your patience, right? They'll hold the level for longer than you think, right? They'll, they'll do a lot of things to kind of trip you up. But as long as you know where you are in the cycle, as long as you understand the big picture and what's going on, okay, you can kind of figure out, you know, their, their moves and predict what they're going to do. Okay, so there are a couple variations of the pattern I'm going to show you, okay, um, and there's, there's generally three types. So the first type that we talked about, okay, is, is really the, the type one pattern, which is uh, the move out of the Asian box. You're going to look for the second leg, um, you know, at the higher low of the day. Um, the second type is where they don't move out of the Asian box. They kind of just stay at the top of the range of the box, okay? And then that's, that's also, uh, you know, uh, a similar move, but they don't go, go out of the Asian box um, to, to make that stop on that, that, that false move. All right, then there's a third type where um, they'll kind of stay in the middle of the range of the Asian box, okay? And uh, then you look for the second leg there, and it'll, and it'll continue down. And obviously, conversely, there are also, you know, buys that correlate, you know, with the same, um, you know, type of uh, behavior. Okay, so the first type, um, stop hunt, false move out of the Asian box to the low, second leg W, and take it up. Um, type two, um, out down to the bottom of the, the, of the box, the range. Okay, and then the third type is, you know, in the middle of the box. All right, so I'm I'm going over these pretty quickly, and obviously in in, in um, you know in, in other very uh, videos later on, I will be kind of going into more in depth so that uh, we can take a look at these um, uh, different variations. But I'm going to show you a couple examples right now uh, on the live charts, so that you guys kind of have an idea. All right, so this is a type one example. Okay, this actually happened last Friday on Euro Odd. Okay, so you can take a look at the H1 chart on the left here. We have um, uh, an M that has formed, okay, on the H1. So our bias here is that we're looking for um, reasons to go short, right? We're looking for short trades to take here. So we jump down to our M15 chart, and we can see out of the Asian box, it has, you know, done that uh, false move at the top there. And what's nice here is you can see a couple uh, wicks, right? If you see those really long wicks there, that's a that's a sure sign that um, you know the market maker is inducing traders to go long at that point. But then they then they took it away, right? Then they snatched it away. They came back down, and you can see the second leg of the M um, right there at the start of the Asian session, uh, the London session, and then they just went straight down and away, right? So you would have been if you were able to catch that on the second leg, you would have been instant profit. Um, and made some nice pips on that. Okay, so that's a, a type one example. Um, a type two example here uh, was also on uh, GA on Friday, uh, GBP Aussie dollar. Okay, same thing. Um, you know, H1 cycle, we're looking for um, shorts here. We got a short bias, so we jump down to our N15, um, take a look at the setup. And right out of the Asian box, you can see here that it's. Um, moves right to the middle of the range, okay, and then and then shifts down. And then uh, if you were able to take that on the shift candle there, you, once you see that big shift candle happen, that shift out of the zone, um, that's usually a good sign that you're, that you're good, right? So if you were able to take that trade uh, after the shift there, you would have rolled that down for, for a very nice, um, you know, 100 plus pips, okay? That was a very nice move on Friday for, for GA. Um, okay, and then our type three example here is on our friend GJ. Okay, so you can take a look uh, H1 cycle, uh, looking to take shorts. And um, if we jump down to the M15 chart, take a look at our Asian box. Okay, we have um, the uh, middle of the range, okay, um, M right there. And then we take that trade short, and that would have been also another nice, you know, 50, 60 pip trade. All right, so. These are, you know, the three different types of examples um, that can the different variations that can happen. So these are, these are the things that you can look for on the charts um, uh, to take your setups. Okay, I will be going over, like I said, in more detail, um, you know, trade setups. Okay, how to look for the trades, um, also the different indicators that I'm using on the charts to help me uh, identify the setups, the the EMAs, and and uh, and also the TDI at the bottom there and. Uh, I will be going over uh, in another video, uh, the part two video, okay? So stay tuned for part two, guys. Uh, but this was just an overview today on the market maker cycle and just an introduction to get you guys to understand, um, you know, what it is and, and what's going on. 
So if you're able to, um, you know, grasp the concept and learn this method, okay, you're going to be able to uh, improve your trading a lot. Okay, you're going to be able to, to trade in line uh, with the market makers so that you're you're never really uh, in the wrong move ever again. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed that, um, and uh, stay tuned for part two, as I said, and I uh, hope you guys are, uh, you know, enjoying your trading week and having a good week. So I'll see you guys in the next video.